Do you think it's helpful for couples to have some money that's their own and some money that's all theirs together? Or how, what's your perspective there? 100%. So the simplest way to set up joint accounts is one joint account, which is used for all joint expenses, rent or mortgage, utilities, cell phone, all that stuff. It pays off your credit card. It goes into joint savings, all of that. But I also recommend having a little bit of individual money that each of you can do whatever you want with. And I think that's really healthy. And a lot of people, they prefer to have a little bit squirreled away in their own personal savings. Fine. Other people want to spend it on their hobby. Fine. In my case, it would be really nice hotels. Also fine. It's no questions asked money. You get to do whatever you want with it. That is, in my opinion, a really healthy way to approach a hybrid system of joint and individual money. And is there a target for how much you kind of put of your, your earnings into that amount? And does, does what you make matter at all in this scenario? I think it does. You know, if um, proportional is always a good way to think about how to set up your account. So if one person is making three times what the other person's making, it's, it's uh, fair to say that one approach, which I think is pretty healthy, is for them to pay more for joint. Now, how you negotiate how much goes into your individual accounts is up to you. But if a person is making 3x more, you know, it's likely they take a little bit more in their individual accounts as well. Also, keep in mind that the person who's earning less should not be totally burdened and be spending 90% of their money on rent because the higher earner wants to live in a nicer place. That's not fair either. So the model we use is we have one shared checking account, all the income from everything goes in there, and all the credit cards get paid. We have our own credit cards and we kind of spend on them how we will but we're not really keeping track of who's spending what and it works. Is that okay? Like it, it does that, are there problems we're overseeing or we're missing of, of giving people a little more freedom because it's all commingled? Uh, this is a great question. And you are one of the few people who says, Hey, it's working for us, but what problems are we not seeing down the road? That is an amazing question. Uh, so overall, if it's working, I say generally that's fantastic. What we want to do with money and account setups is to make sure, as you pointed out, that we're not setting ourselves up for a big blow up down the road. So here are some things to think about. Um, you know, I know you you had uh, kids before. You may have said like, "Hey, we're all you know, we know how to spend. We're we're married. We don't have kids." And when you have kids, obviously things change a lot. One person might say, "I want to buy a really expensive stroller." or this type of food, et cetera, and the other might not. You can do two things. One is you can change the way your accounts are set up. Two, you can just have open, regular conversations. I call them rich life reviews. You do them once a month, or in certain times, once every two weeks, and you just realign. Uh, and you, know, you don't have to agree on everything, again, but you can find solutions to make it work. Uh, I do think that some things to keep in mind going forward would be big changes in income, like, let's just say you start making 4x what you're making. You might go, hey, I, I, I want to step it up. I want to stay at this place or I want to fly this type of thing or whatever. And your wife might not. That's worth a discussion. But aside from that, if it's working and you have regular conversations, I say thumbs up. It's funny. I haven't thought about this. There's a book um, called The 8080 Marriage. I don't know if you've read this book. Uh, yeah, we've talked about it okay, before. Okay, yeah. yeah. And I, I interviewed Nate and Kaylee Klimp with my wife on episode, I think it was 43. I'll link to it in the show notes. But one of the things that I never processed until now was whether you apply this concept, which is basically that instead of everyone kind of playing the tit for tat game of I give, we each get $100, we can spend $100. If you could elevate to, we know no one's trying to overspend the amount of money that we have as a family. We're trying to make sure that we have good times and we can do our own things, but you assume best intent effectively and you have healthy conversations, maybe that could be something that works. So wait, 100%, but remember, most couples don't have a vision together. So they go, yeah, I, of course, you know, I trust my partner, we have kids together, et cetera, but I just can't get over how they always spend so much on this. And th again, they attack the tactic, they attack the symptom and they, what I want to encourage people to do and what I do on the Netflix show and on the podcast is to zoom up and say, what kind of life do we want to live together? Some people, their rich life is to be able to pick up their kids from school every afternoon. Beautiful. I love it. 
okay, so what do we want to do with our money to ensure that? Because if you're spending too much on a mortgage or uh, a truck, then the other partner might not be able to do that. And so that is where we want to start. What's the vision? What does our rich life look like? Down to what does our perfect day look like? And then let's use our money to try to create that. So obviously you need two people to create a shared vision. Do you need two people to kind of be the money manager in the household? Or do you think it's okay for one person to be like, I, I'm going to manage all the investments and track the expenses and do the budgeting? Or is it helpful to have both people? No, you cannot do it alone. The, uh, this is a really common thing. You know, um, people will say, oh, well, like, she's the money person in our relationship. I go, red flag, because just like you will almost never these days hear someone saying, oh, like, he's the parent in this family. She's the parent. That's not how it works. Both people have to be involved. It is that foundational. So unlike emptying the dishwasher or gardening in the back, watering the plants, which typically one person will do, it's just natural in a couple, uh, money is much more like parenting. We've both got to be involved. We've got to have a vision. We've got to talk about it. And we've both got to put some skin in the game. That doesn't mean that both of you have to be sitting there tweaking your asset allocation. First of all, you shouldn't even be doing that. But it's, you know, one of you is probably going to be a little more knowledgeable and comfortable with investments. Okay. That's in, in our relationship, that's me. But we still look at the numbers, we talk about what it means, and she knows. And when we got together, uh, I told my wife, look, it would be really easy for me to be the money guy in our relationship, right? That's what I do for a living. I know how to do this. My systems are bulletproof. But I told her, I want us to both do this. And I insisted on it because one day I'm going to get hit by a bus. And the worst thing I could do would be to leave her defenseless, especially against some 1.5% AUM bullshit charging uh, advisory service. Uh, I, would, I would come back, okay, from heaven or hell. And I would, I would be so pissed. I told my wife that. And she was like, I would never do 1.5% AUM. I ah, love you, babe. The, the, the other thing is, you need two sets of eyes on your money because these things get complicated, right? How should we spend? Am I doing it right? I just need someone to check me. And third and most importantly, it's just more fun. Why would you want to go on this journey alone? This is a rich life. It's not about budgeting. It's not about paying your bills on time. That's a classic myth people have. They think managing money means paying bills on time. Wrong. This is about creating a rich life. And you want to do it with your life partner. It's just more fun. A lot of times I, I get emails from people saying, oh, I, you know, I really want to get my spouse involved, but they're just not that interested. Yeah. It sounds like one tactic is create this rich life together and, and excite people about money yeah. with what it can do. Are there other things you, you've seen work well to yes. get people involved? But wait, hold on, hold on. Yes, but I don't want to skip this because we can't just skip over like it's not fun. Yeah, it's your partner's probably not involved because every time you both talk about money, it's a fight. And it's some meaningless tactical question. Oh my God, I can't believe you got the, uh, the expensive pickles. Who the hell wants to talk about pickles for the rest of their life? I wouldn't even want to have those conversations. So I would say to everybody listening, the last time you talked about money, the time before, the time before, was it a transactional question? Was it a negative question? Was it something accusatory? Or was it a dream? Hey, you know what? I've been thinking, what do you think would be, make this rest of this year amazing for us? Oh, we're planning to see our family for the holidays. What if we took a day before and just did something for the two of us? Have you ever had that kind of conversation? And so I've, you know, I talk about it all the time, but I've tried to model it. That's why on the podcast and the show, you can actually hear me showing couples. You could see me showing them how to do that. Look at the excitement right now. That's the kind of energy I want people to bring to it. So yes, that's number one. And it, you know, recalibrating your relationship always is hard. Your partner might be like, this is really weird. Why are you talking like that? You go, you know why? Because I've realized that when we talk about money, it's not really fun. And I want it to be fun. I love you. And I want us to create this amazing life together. Will you sit down and do it with me? That's compelling. So that's number one. Two is I like people to save for something that they can do that's really fun this year. It could be an overnight trip camping. It could be an amazing trip to Thailand. It could be a meal at a restaurant that you've both wanted to do. But that's a really fun way to, to make the connection that spending money can be something that is part of your rich life. 
totally different than, oh God, we got to pay this bill. So I hope everybody's hearing over and over, start with the positive, start with the vision, start with using your money to live the rich life and all the restriction and cutting back and all that stuff. We could deal with that stuff later.